Today in the Sartorial Chef, it's Tex-Mex Remix. To begin, I'm taking leftover chicken fajitas and turning it into a delicious tortilla soup with black beans, corn, and cilantro. Mm. Then we're doing a fun take on a grilled cheese with quesadillas featuring cheddar and pepper jack cheeses. And for dessert, it's a fun take on an empanada with mango and pineapple. So why don't you pull up a chair and dine with me? Welcome back to the kitchen, guys. I know it's been a while, several months. I kind of hibernated in the winter, letting my creative juices flow and coming up with some new recipes for you guys. Today, we are going Tex-Mex. And I am showing you how to repurpose some leftover fajita ingredients to turn into a delicious soup. So, I've got some chicken here that I have saved from the other night. I did chicken fajitas. I've got onions and peppers here and I've got some chicken. Now these are big chicken strips. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with just half of this. And I'm just going to take and I'm going to cut some of this up. And I'm just going to do a rough chop. Only because I don't want these big pieces in my soup. I want some like smaller bits of chicken and um, the onions and the peppers. And what's great, this is already seasoned. Now when I did the fajitas, I just did some uh, salt, pepper, a little cayenne for some heat, um, a little onion, a little garlic. Nothing major. And um, you know, I just cooked these in a skillet. I let them sizzle. And then I served them with tortillas. I had some cheese, sour cream, you know, the usual. And I made some extra meat because I wanted to do a soup. I always do this um, recipe with my soup. Um, and you can always just make the soup as is, saute your chicken, add your veggies, and then add your liquid. But this is a really fun, quick way to do this soup. And I'm just going to slide this into my pan. I have got a soup pan here on a low heat. The chicken is already cooked, so we don't need to go too much with it. So I'm just going to uh, go on a low heat here. And then we're going to cut up the rest of this chicken here. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our chicken. I've got here some homemade chicken stock and I have just added some of my pan drippings from the other night from the uh, fajitas and I'm just going to add this in and the chicken's already starting to warm nicely now I'm just going to turn this up a little bit we're going to bring our stock mixture up to a boil and then let it reduce down. And I'm just going to give this a nice little stir to get everything incorporated. Okay, now we're just going to let that soup come to a boil. And we will be right back to finish it off. Okay guys, while I'm waiting for the soup to come to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and move on to dessert. I'm doing an empanada inspired dessert with mango and pineapple. I'm just going to start with the pineapple. Now you can get a fresh pineapple if you want. Um, I don't need that much. Normally I, I do like to use fresh fruit. So I just got the can here and I like the size of these chunks. Now the juice, I'm going to save the pineapple juice here because I'm going to use it to make a glaze to go on these um, after they come out of the oven. So I'm just going to drain that off and set that aside for later. And then we'll just dump the pineapple into a bowl here. And next we're going to move on to the mango. These uh, sticker I do not need. Now I do not have a mango slicer. There are mango slicers and they're great. But um, the trick to a mango, you just take your knife down the top here 
until you hit um, the seed. There's a big uh, giant seed here in the middle and you just run your knife along. And kind of take that off. And then we're going to do the same on this side. And just kind of go around. And uh, the middle is kind of what you want to avoid. It's very bitter and it's very hard and that's, uh, you can see the seed there. So we're just going to get rid of that. Now the trick to mango, you just want to kind of score it. I run my knife in one direction this way, and then I will run it again in this direction. And then we will do the same thing to this one. And then again. And then kind of just take your knife and then run it along the skin here and it should slide right out. Just make sure we get all that good mango. Do something different. You know, empanadas, they're usually savory. They're filled with uh, meats and beans and cheese and different things. Um, so I thought, you know, why not do a dessert version, which I thought would be fun. And I'm not necessarily using empanada dough, but we're going to get kind of the same effect as it. So that is the pineapple and the mango. Next to that, mostly to keep the mango from turning, I've got a lime here. Really flavor this. I'm gonna zest the lime some. About half this lime is just gonna give our fruit a nice punch in the face. And we're gonna get about a tablespoon out of this. I'm not gonna do the whole lime, just about a tablespoon. You always want to make sure to check the back of your microplane because you always get zest caught in that. That's gonna give it a nice zing. And then to that, I'm going to add the juice. Now the juice of the lime, that's going to help keep the mango from turning brown. That acid, it's also going to break down the fruit a little, make it nice and tender when we cook it off. And just one lime, that's all we're going to need here. Now I've got some seasonings. We're going to really jazz this up. Some sugar here, and we're just going to do about a fourth cup of sugar. I don't want this too sweet. I'm kind of going for like a sweet heat. I've got some cinnamon here. I'm going to do about um, fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm going to be a little aggressive here. And I've got some cayenne. We're just going to do about an eighth a teaspoon of the cayenne just to give it a nice punch and then of course um, a little salt about a dash of salt and then we're just going to give this a good mix you just want to stir this really good make sure you get all your flavors um, mixed in well you want um, each bite to kind of eat the same. And then I'm just going to let this kind of, um, just going to kind of let this sit and do its thing. Great about this, the dough is already ready to go. You just kind of roll it out. Unroll it, I should say. And then we're going to just kind of Kind of go like that, and then I'm going to cut this into some squares. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to 
put a little filling in these and then kind of close them up and I'm going to move on to a slotted spoon. I don't want to get really any of this liquid here, but I'm just going to spoon some of the fruit here. I just want to get a little bit of the pineapple and the mango. Now empanadas are usually crescent shaped and the dough is kind of crimped so I've got um, my fork here and I'm just going to kind of press down on the dough. Not only does this help keep it sealed but it also kind of gives it a nice decoration and I'm just going to come all the way around here to make sure that it's nice and sealed. Alright, so I've got a baking sheet here I've lined with um, foil here, and I'm just going to take this baby and plop it on. And then I'm going to move on to the next one here. And you really, you don't want to overfill this because it's going to be hard to get it to uh, shut. So I'm just going to uh, fold this over. And then again, we're going to kind of press down on this and kind of crimp it shut. So see, what's going to happen is when this cooks, the fruit's going to break down, it's going to release its juices, and we don't want that to uh, seep out of here. I'm just going to move that over. pretty good, but I'm just going to do a little extra here. I've got some cinnamon sugar and I'm just going to sprinkle the top a little to kind of really, really give them a nice, <clears throat> nice crunchy top. I like how the sugar kind of caramelizes in the oven. Now I've got the oven preheated to 375. I'm following the uh, instructions on the dough. And it's, um, Gonna go in the oven for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna go and set that now. All right, the suit is going great. I've just got some things here I'm gonna add to finish it off here. We'll start with some black beans. This is a really hearty soup. I'm going to add some things to it. It's going to really stretch it out. The other thing that's great about this soup, it makes a lot of portions. So you can portion it out. You can eat on it throughout the week. You can always freeze it and come back to it. I love, um, if I'm entertaining guests doing parties, soups are great because it'll feed a lot of people without, you know, a lot of fuss. You just throw everything into one pot and let it go and you're good to go. So I've got some black beans here. The black beans are going to add some body, um, they're going to add some nice color. It's also another protein. Black, uh, beans are a great protein. So that's going to really be good in the soup and then we'll just stir that. I've also got some corn here. And this is just some corn out of the garden that I have shucked and cut off. I'm just going to throw that whole thing in. What's great about the corn, um, you know, I always like to throw a vegetable in my soup. The corn, um, 
has natural starches to it. So it's going to kind of thicken your soup for you. As the soup cooks down, the corn's going to release its natural starches and it's going to kind of thicken up your soup for you. And lastly, salsa. Now this is just some salsa I keep around. Um, it's a quick go-to salsa and chips, you know. I'm not going to add this whole thing. I'm probably going to do about a fourth of it here. Now what's great about the salsa What's great about the sauce, it's got everything in it. It's got peppers, onions, tomatoes, and it's seasoned. This is a uh, this is a medium salsa, so it's got a little heat to it, not too much. See what happens is this salsa, this is really gonna give you, you your see color. the colors really coming together on this soup. A really nice red color. Now this serves many purposes. You'll notice I have not seasoned my soup at all. I've got the chicken that's already been seasoned from the uh, fajitas and then the salsa, the hot salsa. So you've pretty much got everything you need right here. And then you can just kind of let it go, let it continue to boil, kind of reduce down. I'm going to go ahead and cheat and give a little taste here to my soup just to make sure I've got it where I want it. It's always good to kind of taste as you go. Mm. Oh, so flavorful. Mm. And then that heat kind of hits you in the back. Oh, it's delicious. You know, I'm a home cook. I'm a seasoned to taste cook. So, um, I am always tasting. I've got my tasting spoon out. Does it need more of this? Does it need more of that? Um, the soup is actually going to turn the soup go. down here and let it go. Our empanadas are getting ready to come out of the oven. So I'm going to go on to my glaze. And this is a really simple glaze here. I've got um, the juice from the canned pineapple. I'm just going to turn this on here. Um, just on a medium heat. And then I've got the rest of the juices from the uh, fruit that I mixed up earlier. So you've got a little bit of that heat in there. The the uh, cinnamon, the cayenne. Now to this, I'm just going to add some brown sugar, about a half cup. And that's basically it, guys. I'm just going to let the, uh, a little more here. I'm going to let that brown sugar and the uh, juices reduce. that um, the brown sugar and the juice it's going to kind of cook down and reduce into this kind of syrup thing and then we're just going to drizzle it over top it's going to be absolutely delicious all right ladies and gentlemen the empanadas are ready to come out these have cooked up nicely we got a nice color on the edge there and you can see the cinnamon sugar this is beautiful I'm just going to let these sit for a minute. Let them cool off before we uh, dive in. Okay, I'm just going to plate, plate these up. <coughs> I've just let them sit for a little while. These smell so good, you guys. I wish you were here with me. going to do these three I think for now we'll save this and then the glaze here I'm just going to kind of drizzle that over top this is just a very loose glaze and it's just brown sugar and the juices from our fruit that's good all right now I usually do not care to enjoy dessert before dinner, but we're going to make an exception this time because we have still got our soup going. I'm just going to come in here. Mmm. Mmm. That's so good. <laughs> so good and hot. <clears throat> I 
What's great though is the fruit really gets nice and soft and tender. And you know what I like? You don't see enough mango and pineapple in desserts. Pineapple, it's like pineapple upside down cake. Yawn. Been there, done that. So this is just something fun and different. A fun little dessert check on the uh, empanada. <laughs> Next we're going to move on to our quesadilla grilled cheese and take a taste of our soup. Stay tuned. Alright, I'm ready to finish off this meal. The soup I have just turned off, it is plenty hot. And I'm going to move on to my cheese quesadilla. So, I've got some tortillas here left over from the fajita night. I like the smaller ones, because you can do like smaller ones, you feel like you're getting more, versus like a large tortilla. And I'm just going to do two here, we're going to kind of stack them. I've got my skillet going on medium heat. I'm just going to throw some olive oil in here. That's going to get it nice and crispy for us. Now, cheeses. I've got two different cheeses here. I've got a Cheddar Jack, which is like a Monterey Jack and Cheddar. So that's going to give it a nice tang. And I'm going to... Um, I'm kind of going to go in half with these cheeses, I think, and just kind of do some on each side. And I've also got here a pepper jack. So we're just going to get a nice, um, nice heat. The cheddar kind of gives it a nice sharp note, and then the pepper jack gives a little heat. Now you could kind of go however you want with this if you wanted to do like um, just like a cheddar or a Swiss or something. Um, since I'm kind of Tex-Mex with the soup, I kind of wanted to go kind of Tex-Mex with my cheeses here. All right, we're just going to test our pan here. You get a little water on your finger and you flick it into the pan and if you hear it sizzle, then you know your pan is ready. I'm just going to drop this right in, nice and soft, and I'm just going to let that go. Now one more thing I have here, just to finish off my soup, some fresh cilantro. Now the thing about cilantro, it has kind of a soapy taste if you use too much of it. So you kind of have to have a deft hand with the cilantro. Some people don't like it. I like, um doing fresh herbs, and since we're going Tex-Mex, I thought, you know, cilantro in the soup. So I'm just going to give this a rough chop. You mostly want the leaves, you really don't want the stems, so I just kind of pull from the top. And then we're just going to kind of go back and forth with our knife here and mince up the cilantro, and I really just want a little bit to garnish the soup with. big a pieces of the cilantro, so I'm just going to give that a little mince, and that's going to go right into the soup, and then I'm going to save a little here to garnish mine with. This is getting a nice sizzle to it. And as cheeses are starting to melt, you can smell it good. And then you'll hear it when the sizzle starts to die down. That's when you know this is ready to flip. That means one side is cooked and the ready, the other side is ready to go. And you can already see We've got a beautiful color there on this, and we're just going to let it go on the other side. And I'm going to give this another quick stir with the uh, cilantro in it. 
All right, this is ready to go. I've got my spatula here. And I'm just going to kind of cut this into fours here, little fun little triangles. slide this right onto our plate. Nice. I've got my ball here and I'm just going to get a well. I've got my ball here and I'm just going to grab this ladle here and I'm going to ladle, ladle me some of this soup. What I love about soup Depending on the portions, it can be a meal, it can be a side, it can be like lunch, dinner. So I just got a little portion here. And we're going to come at it again. It's still a little hot, guys. You can see the steam coming off of it, but I'm just going to come in here with my spoon. I'm blowing this a little. I don't want to burn my tongue. Mmm, mm, very nice. Very flavorful broth. Mm. The cilantro gives it a nice fresh note. Now on to the quesadilla. And look at that. I love when I pull apart and you've got all that ooey gooey cheesy goodness. And listen to that. Mm. Listen to that crunch. Mm. Amazing. And then I love to uh, kind of take it and dip it in the broth. Mm. I love the way the cheese just oozes out. I get the sharp notes of the cheddar, and then there's the kind of heat from the pepper jack. It's just absolutely little issues, you guys. Mm. So that is Tex-Mex Remix. <clears throat> As always, feel free to like and subscribe at the bottom if you enjoy the recipes. Please let me know in the comments section. Until next time, this is Sartorial Seth, signing off.